What's up guys, this is Kojo. Um, what I'm going to show is basically, it's mostly for myself. It's like a record of things that I've uh, been working on and just like uh, kind of explaining the process for myself, but maybe this will be of use to somebody else that's watching. But um, lately I've been working with Unity 4 and I wanted to do a little bit more scripting, uh, scripting with JavaScript as opposed to C Sharp, which I've uh, used before. and this entire process goes through, um, you know, as far as a game object, how to get the game object to move in a 3D space, and also how to get the object to animate. So, as you can see over here, this is a scene. I didn't create this scene. This was from a, uh, this is a scene from DT uh, Mobile Development Series, and you see this is um, a model that was still level. You see all the aspects of it. And also here you see the player over here. And with the player, the player has multiple parts. The player is the main player. And basically there's a player, a folder, and everything in there is like a child of it. So it's all part of it. So like there's the main camera. So if you click on the main camera, it's actually the camera preview as you would see in the gameplay. And here is a point light. And I think the point light is uh, it's attached to the gun that the, uh, the the player has, as you can see here, is the gun, and you see the typical gizmos, you know, camera gizmo, light gizmo. Uh, you can look at it many different angles, and this is the entire level. And if you play it, if you play this, uh, plays this scene in particular. This is what you see, and you see some of the objects are animated. But when you try to press any kind of directional movement, uh, whatever it is, you know, the ASD or the up, down, uh, left, right, nothing happens. So, the process was trying to figure out how to get this, this player object to move. So, it first started with a script. So here is um, something here. So what I created was a movement. First, I started with the movement controller script, and um, you see here, if you click on it, to the right, you see, you know, this is actually like the code for the script. But if you want to do any editing, you double click it, go to model develop, and you see this is the script that I wanted to use for for movement. So there are many variables. So you see over here. Um, Variable speed, variable speed, which is um, just a float. Variable jump speed, which is a float. And initially set at eight, eight point zero. Uh, gravity set as a float is, uh, by default is twenty point zero. And also have another variable, a private variable, uh, boom direction, which is actually it's actually taking information from the vector three. So it's a vector three variable move direction and it's set to vector 3 0 which means one cool thing with the unity is that you can actually go straight into the um, scripting reference if you do I think in, on the Mac I'm not sure about the PC if you do you select you select the part of the code that you wish to get information about so I put it over the vector 3 you press command and the apostrophe and it opens the let me close this out. I think it's kind of it's faded out. Let's try this again. Command apostrophe and you see vector three and vectors three zero. This is the one that I use. Uh, vector three zero. That's my. I don't even see that stuff. <laughs> Vector three zero is shorthand for vector three zero uh, on the x, zero on the y, zero on the z, z axis. And also another thing you need to uh, take into consideration, since this is using JavaScript, by default any variable that you declare is, cons is considered public. So let me see. So you remember these variables: speed, jump, gravity. Let's close it out. If I go back to, let me see. Let's see, let me go to the player. Well, first of all, 
in order for me to uh, use the script I need to apply this script to the player so select the player you select the movement script and you drop it onto the player and you see that it's added so in JavaScript in Unity any variable that you declare is by default public so the ones that I declared here speed uh, jump speed gravity they're you're edible, you know that you can edit them within the inspector so if you want to change it while you're playing to 10 that's fine but it's it's not going to change it on the in the in the, in the script so let me just go back to 6 and by def and also if you want a variable to be private you have to declare it as private so over here private variable move direction so you notice move direction is not even noted in the in, in the inspector so let me let's say i take the private out Save it. And let's see what happens. Direction. It should show up. Yeah. So you see now, since I declared it as uh, took out the private, it's you can edit in the in the inspector. So you see you know it's a vector vector 3 so the x y and z you can adjust those like this like that go back to zero and set it back to private on the other hand if you do a c sharp script um, I think by default it is private and in order for you to have it editable within the inspector you have to declare it as public explicitly so you go back make this private And I don't know, I guess it's a habit because of the C sharp. I usually, I don't know, it's probably like, you know, not a good habit, but I always declare them as public just to keep it straight. Because sometimes when you work in Unity, you're going to be working with both JavaScript and C sharp script. So just to be consistent, I just, um, when I know something, I want something to be editable within the inspector, whether it's JavaScript or C sharp, I always put public. And for something that I want, sh I don't want to be editable within the inspector. I, I, I always set everything to private. So let me just save that. So in order for for the movement, I want something in which um, it updates every every frame. So first thing you see over here is the controller. I set a variable for controller, which takes this information from the character controller. If you want more information, you, also it's a good thing to go command. And you get all the information as far as the variables, the functions, the inherited members, and this is really, really useful as far as ex experimenting. Yeah, I watch anime. Let me close that out. And uh, and based upon that, it says get component character controller. So basically, it's going to get its information from the character controller, which is actually attached to the player object that we have in uh, in Unity. So you go over here, player it has a character controller so basically the script is referencing that character controller and the next thing you have here is is if the con if the controller which is based you know from here the character controller is grounded meaning if the character controller is like colliding with the surface of the, the ground um, it set up another this is based on the move direction Variable vector th vector three zero zero zero. Um, have the input get the horizontal axis on the x, and I set the for the y axis set that to zero, and for the z axis input get axis vertical. So basically, yeah, allows for player input. So like now you you see like these things parentheses the horizontal and the vertical, and you're wondering where those come from. If you go to back to Unity, just close that out. Go back to Unity. Go into wait, project settings. Go to input, and you see these axes, axes, and um, you see one for vertical, which is basically you know controls like the the up and the down. And you see another one for the let's see horizontal, 
which covers you know controls left to right and you see other ones such as one for fire one fire two one for jump just like the positive button is the space button um, you see the vertical positive button is the yeah up down button they're, so they're different they're different uh, inputs so if you want to like actually reference these inputs you this is how you reference them by parentheses so like as you saw over here, all of them are considered axes. Axes, so you input get axis. Get more information on that. Get axis. And it's very important to like always reference, uh, go back to the scripting references. Like also you can go through here as well instead. If you want to, you can access the reference manual, uni manual, scripting reference manual through the help. So, so basically, if the character is grounded, be able to allow move uh, control the input. So, if you do left or right, control the 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 horizontal movement. If you do up or down, control the vertical movement. And let me see. This was actually just to control the the movement, the transform direction. So go over here. Transforms direction from local space to world spaces. It, yeah. So you, once you do this, you have to control the play input, control how to move, and also you need to control how fast to move. Um, so you see how I'm referencing. So I have the move direction, and I have a it's um, it's times equals speed. So you see over here, I made a public variable speed, and it's set to six. So let's say you play the character, and the character movement is too slow or too fast. You can actually make adjustments while you're playing in the uh, the game view. And within this this function, um, uh, you can also you also need to put uh, something with regards to the jumping movement. So this handles like the left or right, but specifically for the jump movement. So input, get button, jump. So whenever the the button that's attributed to the jump is pressed, which is the space button on on the on my keyboard. This will happen. Move direction y. That y jump speed. So the jump speed is set to eight, which is actually actually can be adjusted since it's a public variable. And outside of that if if statement, you need to be able to because one thing one problem is before when you try to play this character, nothing was happening. It was because the actually the the player was floating in the space. So it wasn't actually touching the ground. So in order for this actual if ground that is grounded, this control that is grounded, to get it to work, you need to apply gravity to the player. So basically, it says move direction. So it's applied to the y negative equals gravity times times that, that delta time because you don't want you don't want the the movement to be dictated by per frame. You want it to be dictated by per second. Um, so you set the gravity, so which will get the control, uh, this if if then if statement to work, and this one is basically, you know, to get the car the, the controller to move. So just actually go here. So everything is explained. In the scripting reference, so just having that movement script applied, this is what happens to the uh, to the player. So let me show you. So we press play, it goes from the scene view to the game view, and you see the movement going left, going right, pressing space to jump going right you see all that yeah so the camera's moving with the player and you see like the spotlight the point light it's moving as well let's go through the entire scene so that's you know that's all good but you know it looks kinda there's no movement there's no animation from the character so in order to get the character movement as far as like the the animation um, another script has to be made so let me you know what first before going into the actual script 
if you look into the imported uh, asset of the the player, let's go to the model. This is the actual model you see here. Look to the lower right. Look, move it around. It's the model. It's the rig. This is uh, the model setting. And you see here at the lower level, you see animation. So prior to being imported, basically when you have a character and which has different kinds of movements, you just you import it with all the animations as one, you know, one full uh, as one full animation. So you have like one portion of the animation, you know, whatever seconds zero through two idle, seconds three through four moving right, you know. Likewise, you have every every single animation sequentially into one animation, then you import it into Unity. So you see over here, there's like um, there are six animations. So element zero is for uh, the character when, when he's idle. It's, animation two is when he runs forward. Uh, element you know two is when he runs backwards. So you, you get the idea. And let me go up here. If you go to animations, you can see like. segments like you see the clips these are clips idle I guess is this is the frames maybe it's the frames this is the I guess frames 1 through 51 it's idle frames if I click here frames 52 through 72 is the run forward you know you get the idea strafe right strafe left death you know death uh, so obviously basically it's uh, 218 frames 24 frames per, per second and so once you know that you can create a script. Go back to scripts. The animation script. And you want this to apply um, in the uh, in the update. So basically um, per frame. So you set up an if then say you know if 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 uh, then uh, if else if statement. So if input get key uh, D or input get the key right, this animation will occur. So if you go click animation play, you need this in order to get the animation that you want to get the animation to work. So animation.play and you notice it uses the, the the term run forward. If you remember, if you go back to um, I'm trying to go back to the object, the model, each animation had its own term so you see idle run forward run backwards so you need to reference that in order to get back to that that segment of the animation so we go to mono so animation play run forward you see here run forward if that's not happening else if input get key a or input get key left with like the left uh, direction of animation play uh, run backwards it's, it's, and you go down the, down the list you know so either if you want to play the character using the A, W, S, S keys um, and also don't forget if you, if you forget like the inputs go back to let's go here project settings input and you see here um, horizontal you can use uh, Left, right, the alternate, the you know, the left, right keys. The alternate keys you could use are the A or the D keys. The vertical, the the main keys are down, up, or the ultimate uh, keys are S, W. So that's what's being used. So let's go back to one develop. So that's what's being referenced. Uh, these 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 axes. So so animation play run backwards. Let me go back to the. model so you can see it and then you know you just go down the list else if uh, W up and put up you know animation place strafe left strafe right but if none of these are none of these keys are being pressed no keys are being pressed you set to animation cross idle 
And the reason why cross rate is being used is because it kind of when you when you like let's say you're moving forward and then you stop the animation it becomes a little bit jerky. So let's say you press right and the cross rate happens like it's a smooth transition between right to idle or if you if you go to left and you take the, your hands off the key it does a smooth transition to idle instead of like the, having that jerky that jerky movement. So with this script like you notice how the movement script that I did when I move left right uh, you know jump was was placed upon um, the player in the hi hierarchy but you, you can't place the the animation script on the the player you have to place it on the model that actually has the animation which is the uh, PFB player so you take the let me see animation you drop it over the PFB player and you see it shows up here and if you press play yeah there's no errors if there were any errors in the script you would have saw it in the console in red or if there's a warning you would have saw it in yellow you press play if you press right it's two things are happening it's moving moving right obviously but also it's accessing the the animation as far as the run forward animation. If I press back, it's you know going left and it's accessing the run backwards animation. If I strafe uh, to the right, it moves to the right, the animation is, is, is put in place with the right movement, left. The jump is not, <laughs> it looks silly but it works so if you see it, let me just go down the seam, strafe right, go all the way down, Straight for it, get in. So there you have it. So basically, it's a combination of the movement and a combination of, uh, of animation. And one thing that's very, very useful is to actually always rep go back to the script, go back to the scripting reference and the reference manual to learn about um, other scripting techniques as far as animation. Whatever you do, if you don't know something, always command apostrophe to figure out how to use particular functions and variables things of that nature so so as again this is mostly for me just to keep track of the work that was done in this animation but if there's any of use to, uh, to any of you that are out there then that's great if you have any questions uh, let me know and uh, that should be it alright